Hey guys, today's show is brought to you by Patriot Gold. Jamie DeMond, CEO of J.P. Morgan, is warning of an economic hurricane. The CEO of Wells Fargo warns that the worst is yet to come for Americans. And Larry Summers' forecast is a recession ahead with millions of layoffs. The layoffs have already begun with big tech companies like Tesla and others slashing 10% of their workforce. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are both warning the market has another 20% to fall and is not pricing in a recession. Bloomberg Intelligence forecasts $2,500 gold by year's end. And meanwhile, Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo see gold hitting highs in 2022. Jeffrey said their long-term forecast remains in place for gold prices to plus $5,500 an ounce. Call the paper Patriot Gold Group today before it is too late. If you mention Tracy Beans, you'll get best-in-class service from Patriots Protecting Patriots. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver, and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Call 800-356-4470 for a free investor guide today. Patriot Gold Group is a consumer affairs top-rated gold IRA dealer six years in a row. Call 800-356-4470. Radio Influence. The future is now. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Dark to Light podcast with... Thank God it's Friday, Val, and... Beans! It's it's Friday, and you know what sucks is that I had a different plan for the show today, and we have to get some sad news out of the way right out of the get, which is terrible. Yeah. Um, but, sh- you know, former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was uh, assassinated yesterday. Any reason why? There's differing stories, so one of them comes out and says that he was, you know, he had other issues it wasn't policy related or anything and then another one says it was policy related he's a former navy guy now you know japan is like one of the countries that you cannot have a weapon in it, uh, right right I heard- yeah it's like one of the safest quote countries on earth um and they have no tolerance for guns really um like this anyway at all and this guy he fashions like barrels to a plank and he died hmm and go ahead. No, no, no. I, yeah, that's all I know too. Uh, that's all anyone knows. Uh there's, there's, you know, Trump came out and made a statement about it because they were very close because they had a lot, um, you know, of I guess good rapport. But other than that, there's not much out there on it. Uh, I don't know if this is totally real or what's going on, but they, they there's also reports that in places like Sri Lanka where um, you know, a lot of shortages and stuff like that are, are hitting really hard. There's over, so who who knows? Everybody, everybody's uh, everybody's feeling it. Everybody's Every, feeling it. Everybody's feeling it. There's stuff going on all over the world. Um, this is not going to be the entire show, but we have to talk about this. First, it started me. What started me on this was the guidestones. And I, if there's anybody out there that's going to have some perspective on this, I want to hear it's you. The, okay. The Georgia guidestones hit us, Frank. Well. I mean, uh, sad to see him go. It is a, it's a, they they say largely mysterious, largely mysterious collection of uh, tablets. And it is really just a 10 commandments for a very demonic uh, Luciferian worldview. It's purely genocidal. And in fact, I've said in the last uh, day or so, it goes beyond genocide because uh, you're, you, you know, you, you go and you focus in on one ethnic group or another, and you want to reduce them. That's one thing. And when you say that you need to get rid of at least 94% of the planet to be able to keep it in perfect harmony with with nature and the rest of the Agenda 21 nonsense, that's another. And it's a, uh, it's been a, a more and more contested monument in this very remote place in uh in georgia obviously there's a lot of people that have that have pulled up the the synchronicity and the synchronicities behind uh timing of when it arrived it's you know it's um i I think it's like exactly 666 miles from the un headquarters in in uh in new york i mean it's all weird stuff people always talk about that 
But in recent years, it's been more and more held in contempt by those who are waking up to who's running the world. Like, do you really need to know who who commissioned the these tablets? With, well, they're written in eight languages. I mean, we, we we see these faces every day now. It's the Klaus Schwab's of the world. It's the same type of outlook. But somebody took it out, and or something took it out. Don't hmm. know. That's the thing. I don't know. So here's here's the thing too. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't even know what they were. Never heard of them before. So these are massive. You know, twenty something ton tablets, for lack of a for for lack of a better word, that. The story is a random guy, impeccably dressed, wandered into this, you know, stone shop in this town in Georgia that's known for its granite and rock and stuff and asked them to commission this very particular monument for them and place it in this exact spot where it it ended up because of the way the sun is and all kinds of stuff. And the guy like basically laughed it off because he thought he was a nut and he'd never be able to afford it and quoted a price that was like three or four times what it actually cost to, to make these things. And the guy was like, okay. And they got to work. He had to bring in astronomers and all kinds of other stuff to make them. And in it, it on them, it's carved in like f- languages that have been dead for however long. Old. There's four, there's four ancient languages and then there's eight world languages. So there you go. So the, the, he put these 10, quote, commandments on the, the tablets. I, I think I posted them yesterday because people didn't know. Here we go. Um, they say this. They say, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Mm-hmm. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, and love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. That's what it says. Right. And they put them up. And then every day at noon, was it right? the sun would shine through a small hole and illuminate the date of that day. It was a star clock and a sundial. Yeah. And then next to it, several feet away on the ground, was another plaque in the ground that said that there was a time capsule buried underneath it, but there were no dates inscribed on when it was buried or when they should exhume it. Yeah, and nobody knows what was in the time capsule. Or if there was one. If there was one. That's actually a point of contention. So uh, that's that's a lot. But as far as the actual video goes, when we heard that, it, yeah, every couple of months somebody goes there and splashes red paint on it, uh, defaces it. They'll spray paint F the New World Order, things like that. And that's always great. It's good to see people. Um, good to see people ready to express themselves. But as far as this goes, I mean, the blast was so strong. There is no real. I know that there was some footage. That was released last night of a supposed humanoid, uh, uh, you know, silhouette that was running in and running out. I don't believe it's real. They they have like three frames of a silver sedan driving away from the scene around the time that the explosion happened. Uh, apparently, they're still using webcams from 2001 from outside <laughs> of the Pentagon uh, because we only get three frames at a time. It's really just it, it's so odd. And. Another thing is, I don't know if this is just because the explosion warped everything around it or if it was part of the event, but there was a street lamp or something that was next to the stu- the, the the guide stones. And when the it was the Hindi and Swahili tablet was blown up, there was a uh, like a flash of light coming from the the street lamp, too. Now, I don't know. Like, again, I don't know if that's just this. A, a disturbance caused by the actual um, thing, or if there was an electrical surge, uh, I don't know, finger of God, who knows? But it, it wasn't it wasn't anything that, that left any soot. It didn't disturb the ground around it. Obvi- we were wondering if somebody had brought a wrecking ball in there at some point, but then we saw that there was footage. There's no wrecking ball. Um, but it is just... Uh, Whoever blew it up knew what they were doing. Yeah, this was not some like little detonation with they like literally had to put like pads on this thing. These, these are 19 feet, 19 foot tall slabs of granite. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah. Yeah, they they so they explode at four oh three and thirty three seconds exactly, which is <laughs> just crazy. Yeah. So when I first saw it, the first thing I thought was, okay, is this quote good guys sending a message like you're not going to get this done, or is it the bad guys saying we've accomplished this, let's get rid of it, right? Those are my two my two feelings, and then. I, I was stunned as later in the day, one like randomly comes in a a a a, a, cat, a caterpillar excavator type machine, and they just destroy the rest of the monument the same day without like there's no police tape, there's no like they're just getting rid of the crime, like there's no evidence anymore. It's gone. Well, I, don't, I don't know how fast forensic teams work, but it, it was very odd to see this thing getting bulldozed about. You know, within the same 12 hours that the thing went up, blew up, um, I, I just didn't understand it. You know, what, what, how, what was the extent of your investigation? I understand if the, if the structure is compromised, you don't want people checking it out. Well, you know, post a police, guard, post a guard for a couple <laughs> more hours. It's in the middle of a deserted field. It's not like it's in the middle of a city street. And what, what's the deal there? I, I just so. I, I don't know. But then again, they got all the debris in uh, New York City out in a hurry, too. Very weird. I don't I don't understand it. So that started me off. And I was just like, everybody is like talking about it. And I'm like, yeah, I, it was just crazy. And then, you know, I went to bed. I went to bed the next morning. I wake up and, and I, I go to Citizen Free Press like I go to every day. And then I get the notice that Boris Johnson has stepped down after basically his entire cabinet has stepped down. And then I get text messages that um there's there's absolute upheaval by the people in Italy they're just revolting against the government in Italy like millions of people outside chanting and and standing we don't do and the these. dutch the and dutch the dutch yes it's everywhere it's happening polish, everywhere polish farmers too are in on that german german farmers go to the border to stand in solidarity it's it's this like worldwide thing and i'm scrolling through frank and i get to this line on um on Citizen Free Press, where I see, I see it says uh, something to the effect of he left the sat founder of the Satanic Church denounces all of the other things he stepped down from because he was the he ran the thing, and then I find his Facebook video and I sit and I watch it forty minutes long. I can't explain to you what happened in that forty minutes. It was life changing. It sounds crazy, but this guy, and then he went on to say that. There were four Christians who had shown him unconditional love in the past, like, three or four months. And it was just random things, like he had done a, a um, uh, an interview at a Christian radio station or something about it, what he was doing. That he'd never been able to meet this woman in person, that he'd been talking to about this stuff for years. And um, she just hugged him after he had denounced, basically, Jesus as fake and not real and all kinds of other crap. And he felt like this weird feeling when she hugged him. And he was like, okay. And then he, which they have to do, I guess, to get more influence and power and whatever. Mm -hmm. And he said that Jesus appeared to him and that he said, well, yeah, okay. If you're Jesus, you're going to have to prove it to me. And he was just like overcome with this amazing feeling of like, of love and, and this energetic outpouring of just peace and whatever. And I'm like, <gasps> Like, just the way he was explaining it, the way he looked, what was coming out of him as he's talking about this. Not overly dramatic, not overly, like, fran frantic or, or, you know, whatever. Just just an honest, like, genuine, I don't know. It's, Conversion it's, story. Uh, yes. I mean, seriously. Like, and then he tells, like, of these weird coincidences that have happened where he's met somebody just randomly on the beach that he met 20 years ago and just all these things that, that and it just, like, took me by, like, I, it, I can't, I had to take the video and put it up on Rumble because I'll take it down soon. Ivory Hecker reported on this as well. The, the, this video of this guy, this, this conversion story is the most uplifting, beautiful thing I've ever seen with my own two eyes in person, ever. Here, let me play a little bit of this. This portion of the podcast has been edited. If you guys want to hear the full version of the podcast, you can go to our Rumble channel at Uncover DC, or you can go to our website, UncoverDC.com, underneath podcasts.